This is probably one of the hardest things you will need to learn in Finite. Here I've developed a step-by-step, -step, as easy as possible to understand method for solving row reduction problems. If you don't understand completely the first time through, don't stress too much. Rewatch this portion and make sure you understand what exactly each step accomplishes. The idea of the row reduction method is to use algebraic manipulation to make the matrix to eventually look like this, where A, B, C being constants. When you get to this point, this is good because now you can say 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals A. So this is the same thing as saying x equals A, y equals B, and z equals C. Before we get into how to actually do that, we're going to first learn about leading one. A leading one has to satisfy two conditions. It's the first non-zero number in the row that is a one, and it lies in a column full of zeros. Here's an example of the leading one. It's the first number in the row. It's a one, and it has, it's in a column full of zeros. Here are a couple of examples of not what not a leading one. A one that's not in a column full of zeros. And a one that's not the first non-zero number. A matrix is reduced if every row in it has a leading one. Examples of reduced matrices. Here, for example, this one. Row 1 has a leading 1 here, row 2 has a leading 1 here, row 3 has a leading 1 right here. I want to emphasize that matrix is reduced if every row has a leading 1. So here you notice the third column that doesn't actually have a leading 1, but that doesn't matter because we need every row to have 1, and here every row does have 1. So some students make the mistake of checking if each column has one, and that's not correct. Here's another example. You can see row 1 has a leading 1 right here. Row 2 has a leading 1 right here. And row 3 has a leading 1 right here. And here's an example of a non-reduced matrix. Row 1 has 1, row 3 has 1, but row 2 doesn't have 1 because this is not a leading one in a column not full of zeros. So when you work on a row reduction problem, the goal is to get a leading one in each row. Here are three operations that you're allowed to do. You can switch rows. You can multiply row by a constant. You can add and subtract two rows and then replace one of them, the new row. And we will now go through how to use these operations to row reduce. And here first I want to make a disclaimer that this might be slightly or drastically different than what your professor shows you. The logic is the same, but the way to work it out might be quite different. And my ways might be better, but it's up to you to do it whatever way you should do best. So at this point, make sure you understand the concept of leading one. If you don't, please visit back that section and make sure you understand it. Here we'll use this following example. And we'll first put this in the augmented matrix form. So now we're going to get a leading one for row one first. So in this corner right here. And we'll first step is to make it a 1, which it already is. So we're going to skip this step. If it were not, you can simply divide the row by whatever number you're making to make it a 1. Say if it was a 2, then you can just divide the whole row by 2. So now what we have to do is to clear the column. And we're going to do that by manipulating row 1 and multiplying it by some constant. So here you see a 5, and I want to make this 5 a 0. So we're going to use row 1 
and use this one to match up with this five. And I'm gonna do that by multiplying negative five times row one. And here note that I'm I'm writing the multiple of negative five row one next to row two. And a common mistake is to multiply the wrong row. So here I clearly wrote down negative five times row one, and the result is negative five, negative fifteen, ten, and negative ten. And here in a second I'll explain why I would want to write it exactly right here. And when you work through the problem, you should write it exactly in all the places that I'm writing these things. Here we have a negative 2, and to make negative 2 a 0, I'm going to manipulate row 1 by multiplying, by, multiplying it by 2. So you get 2, 6, negative 4, and 4. So again, here what I'm doing is I'm multiplying row 1 by the negative of whatever this number is. And I'm writing that new row one, pseudo row 1 right next to the row. And here, now you simply add side by side. And here's why I want to write it right next to it. So remember, the row you're trying to get the leading one for is both the row you're manipulating and the row that will stay the same. So here you can see from this to this, row 1 stay exactly the same. And that is the row you're multiplying. So that, tr that keeps you to try to f multiplying the wrong row. And here I simply add side by side. 5, times, five plus negative 5 is 0. 16 plus negative 15 is 1. Negative 8 plus 10 is 2. 19 plus negative 10 is 9. And here again, I, since I've multiplied row 1 by negative 5, the negative sign is already taken care of. So you're adding side by side. You don't have to think about subtracting a negative or anything like that. So simply add. And row 3 the same. I add side by side. And here's the result. So here you can see now we have obtained the leading one for the first row. We now move on to the second row by the same method. So we're going to make this a 1 now. And it already is. So we don't have to do anything. And now we have to clear the column the same way that we did for row 1. Again, we're trying to get a leading one for row two. That will be the row being manipulated, and that will be the row that remained the same for the step. So we're, manip we're manipulating row two this time. We want to get rid of a three, so we're going to multiply row two by negative three. And again, I will write that right next to row one. This I'll be adding. And again, here I have row two in color. Make sure you do not multiply the wrong row. An easy thing to do is negative 3 and then simply multiply it row 1. So here I take negative 3 times row 2, which is 0, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 27. Same for row 3, doing it in the same step. I multiply row 2 by negative 4 to get rid of this 4. And negative 4 times row 2 is this right here. And now we add side by side. Row 1 is going to become this new row. Row 2 stay the same. And row 3 is going to become this row. And now we do the exact same thing as we just did for the first two rows, getting a leading one for row 3. Again, it's already a 1. Don't have to do anything with that. And we're going to clear this column with the exact same logic. Multiplying 8 times row 3. Multiplying negative 2 times row 3 here. And then adding them side by side. And again, remember, row 3 is this row we're trying to get a leading one for. So that is the row we're 
well, we're multiplying, we're manipulating, and that is the row staying the same. Here again, we add row side by side. Here's the new row one. Add these side by side. It's the new row two. And here you can see, I've got this matrix exactly looking how I showed it at the very beginning. And here you see there's the solution. X equals negative 1, Y equals 3, and Z equals 3. And note that this is considered one single solution, not three solutions, because X, Y, and Z is equal to one particular thing. So this is one solution. Here again, don't get too stressed if you don't understand it all yet. This is a very difficult method to learn, so rewatch this part if you need to. Visit the practice problem and watch it being done. And most importantly, practice. Here we're going to talk about infinite solutions with arbitrary variables. Let's look at this following system of equations. As you might already notice, the second and the third row is just multiples of the first. So nevertheless, we'll proceed with the usual step, as if you didn't notice that. And we do it the same usual steps for the row reduction. We're going to make this a leading one. And we're going to do that, clear the column, and manipulate row 1. So we multiply negative 2 times row 1 for row 2, and positive 5 times row 1 for row 3. We add side by side, and we see that they both become rows full of zeros. A row full of zeros is eliminated from the system. Because it says 0x times 0y plus 0z equals 0. And that's always going to be true, so that's saying nothing. So here now there's only one row left. This row has a leading one. So you're finished with the reduction. And here notice, uh, I said this is a leading one. And it's not in a column full of zeros, there are no zeros. But when there are no zeros, it is a column full of zeros. So this is the fix well this is the this is the leading one. And the variables with the leading one are the fixed variable. So I've named this the fixed variable. And a fixed variable means their values is gonna depend on the arbitrary or is some constant. The variables without the leading one are the arbitrary variable. The value can be anything. For the arbitrary variable, we give the solution like this, y equals y, z equals z. And here let me explain a little more what exactly arbitrary variable means. It means that in this system, I can make y whatever I want and make z whatever I want. So I say y is 3, z is 1, well that's fine. I say y is 5, z is 2, that's fine. I said y is negative 3, z is 10, that's fine too. So they're arbitrary, meaning they can be absolutely anything in the world, as long as they're numbers. Now for the fixed variable x. So here, remember, this is a matrix representation of an equation. So let's decipher the equation. We get x plus y plus z equals 5. Now rearranging it, give us a solution, x equals 5 minus y minus z. And to explain a little further what this means here, it means that y can be anything, x can be anything, z can be anything, and I can put whatever y and z in here, and x will be fixed to the thing that depend on whatever y and z are. And with these x, y, and z, this system will be satisfied.
So here's the final answer of the system. It will look like this. And this is a solution with infinite, infinite number of solutions and two arbitrary variables. Let's look at infinite solutions with one arbitrary variable. We'll consider this scenario. We've been working with the system of equation, and we've arrived at this point. Again, the column with the leading one is fixed. The column without the leading one is arbitrary. So x is a fixed variable. Z is a fixed variable. Y is arbitrary. First, we'll decipher the two equations, which look like this here. Here you can immediately see that z is 2. So z is 2 again. Arbitrary is y, so y equals y. And we rearrange the equation. We rearrange the first equation to get x on one side. And x is going to equal to 4 minus 2y. And this is the solution with one arbitrary variable. Another special case is when there's no solution. Let's look at this system of equation and we proceed to our usual row reduction method, turn it into a matrix form. And then to get a leading one for row one, clearing this column and multiplying row one by negative two to accomplish that. We add side by side. And we'll see that row 2 becomes 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1. Well, that is impossible. When you reduce a matrix and arrive at 0 equals some number constant c, something other than 0, then there is no solution to the system. And you can stop immediately at this point. 